think. Good morning. Good morning. All right, I'm on. How's everybody this morning? Okay. My name is Pastor Scott or Scott or whatever you want to call me. I'm glad you're here today. Welcome to worship. If you, uh, we are, we are so excited today. We got a lot going on. Just so that you know, two announcements before we get into the service today. One, the ice cream socials at three, at three o'clock. Okay, three o'clock. We've got 14 different people made homemade ice cream. It's going to be right in here. I hear there's a, a fantastic award and it's going to be good. So I look forward to seeing you there. Also, we still have spots for kickball players. Kickball players. We do. We made a team and we're going to show up. We start games on Friday nights. We start this Friday. We play two games a night, and if we don't like it, we'll quit. Uh, no, that's no quitters never win. Blah 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 blah. Anyway, we're glad you're here. Um, I believe you're here. God has something for your life and for you. Um, so as we begin today, I've asked Mark to open us up with prayer today. Mark is one of our Steve Ministry. He's going to mention something about Steve Ministry. We got a, a special Steve Ministry thing today, and I'll let Mark talk about that. Go ahead, Mark, brother. Thank you, Scott. Uh, if you've been here the last uh, last week, uh, you probably heard another uh, message about what Stephen Ministry is. But for those that weren't here, uh, or just another perspective, I guess, uh, but what is Stephen Ministry, and, and what? Uh, and when I was going through the class to become a certified Stephen Minister, uh, uh, one verse really stuck out to me that really explains it all. And it's uh, in Galatians chapter six, and uh, actually at the top it says. Doing good to all is the title of the chapter. So that made me feel pretty good. Um, but uh, verse 5 says, For each one should carry their own load. Now, everybody has a job or they have family that, you know, we have the vagaries of life that you have to just take care of it with, with God's help, but it's on your shoulders to take care of. But verse 2 says, Carry each other's burdens, and in this way you will fulfill the law of Christ. So there are things that happen, uh, you know, you get laid off from a job and you don't know how you're going to pay your bills. You, you know, have a family member that's sick and, you know, you don't know how you're going to do your job and take care of the sick one. Uh, maybe that leads to death and you don't know how you're going to be able to move on without that significant family member. Um, we come in, that's when we come in. We help you with the burden. We, carry, we help carry that load with you. We're the ear of Christ and the body of Christ. We become the ear. And we uh, listen, we pray, and uh, give you uh, the resources if, you're, if they're needed. Um, so that's Stephen Ministry. We have a wonderful uh, group up here um, that are willing and able to help you out. And uh, if you have any burdens, uh, please reach out. There's a, on the website, there's a Stephen Ministry part of the HFUMC website, or you can reach Pastor Scott, or you're going to meet two new leaders today here in just a minute. You can reach out to them as well if you know them personally. Thank you. Hold on. Mark's going to open us with prayer. I'm going to pray. Yep. Dear Heavenly Father, uh, is it there? There we go. Dear Heavenly Father, uh, first and foremost, please pray for the hands that make this yummy, yummy ice cream coming up, and that they made a lot of it. Uh, also, just thank you for this day. The weather outside is gorgeous. Um, and please pray for the loads that we have on our life. Everybody has just some things that are stressors. And pray for that, that they involve you in all of this. But then, Lord, if, if anybody has a burden, they can't carry it on their own. And they need somebody. And sometimes family isn't good enough. And we just need an outside source. And their church family comes into play. So please... Let them receive that gift uh, that we're willing to provide. And it's in your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Mark. Let's stand. Let's, let's worship. Let's join our voices and let's sing our faith this morning. One salvation, one doorway that leads to life, one redemption, one confession, I believe in the name of Jesus Christ. I believe in the crucifixion, by his blood I have been set free, I believe in the Resurrection, hallelujah, his life is death's defeat. All 
praise to God the Father, all praise to Christ the Son, all praise to the Holy Spirit, our God has overcome the King who was and is and evermore will be in Jesus' mind. Ears have heard or eyes have seen. I believe that the day is coming. He's returning to claim his bride. Light the altar, keep it burning. See the Lamb who rose the roaring light. All praise to God the Father. All praise to Christ the Son.
As the Spirit was moving over the water, Spirit, come move over us. Come rest on us. Come rest on us. As the Spirit was moving over the water, Spirit, come move over us. Come rest on us. Come rest on us. Come down. Spirit, when you move, you make my heart pound. When you build the room, you're here and I know you are moving. I'm here and I know you will fill me. Come down. Spirit, when you move, you make my heart pound. When you build the room, you're here and I know you are moving. I'm here and I know you will fill me. Please be seated. Yeah, great. Thanks, you. So we are commissioning our Stephen ministers today, some of those. And so what, what are you guys doing sitting down there? Yeah, yeah. We, uh, hey, hey, hey. Let, let the people see you. Um, they have gone through extensive training, and uh, we're going to commission them. And one of the things that you should know is that if you're going through a hard place, they're, they're not psychologists. They're not psychiatrists. They're not doing that kind of work. What they're doing is on a spiritual journey 
If you find yourself that you just need someone to walk along beside you after you've talked to me and, and we've, we've shared some of those things, all confidential, 100%. And they walk along beside you. They were assigned by the right person, the right, they kind of make that, they help walk along beside you. And then, as that goes, they also meet in a group and they, uh, in, in, a not, in a confidential way, they share conversations that might have happened where the group helps them even get better in those conversations. And that's what these groups are about. But we're going to commission them and I will address them. So, with that being said, I just want you to, as Christians, we are part of the priesthood of all believers, all who are called to offer ourselves to the Lord and thanksgiving for what God has done for us and continues to do for us in Jesus Christ. But it is our privilege to recognize and support those who are trained for specific ministries in the congregation. Especially today as we recognize the firm Stephen Ministry and those Stephen leaders who will direct this ministry. So I'm asking you to because of your gifts and your calling and your training, we charge you with these responsibilities. To build awareness of our growing Stephen Ministry, to solicit and commit the commitment of this congregation to Stephen Ministry at every opportunity to recruit, select, and train thoroughly as Stephen Ministry for those members of this congregation whose gift it is to share one-on-one -on -one care ministry. If you believe you have a special gift of one-on-one -on -one ministry, they help train you and make sure that happens. To work with me and this congregation to define members who have those continual gifts and caregivers who might need a Stephen Minister. And they are also to supervise these confidential caring relationships and offer regular opportunities for continuing growth and skills and practice of caring ministries. So, with that being said, I'll let Randa go ahead and ask them some questions that they must affirm with you in front of all of us so they take this seriously. More seriously. They take it seriously. <laughs> They're going to confirm their seriousness at this moment. Will you assume this ministry in the confidence that it comes from God? If so, your answer is, I will. Will you nurture the skills that you have learned and use them in service to others to support, encourage, build up, and heal people in all their needs? If so, your answer is, I will. Members of the congregation of Hendersonville First United Methodist Church, will you open your hearts in the ministry to these Stephen ministry leaders and pray for them as servants of Christ? If so, your answer is, yes, with God's help. Yes, with God's help. Pastor Scott, will you support the ministry of these trained Stephen ministry leaders, affirm the training of Stephen ministers, carefully refer trained caregivers to those in need of supportive ministry, encourage confidentiality, and therefore help to equip the saints for ministry? If so, your answer is yes, with God's help. Absolutely yes, with God's help. And now we're going to ask Mark and the other Stephen ministers to come and surround these folks as Mark prays for them. And I'm going to ask you to just extend a hand out so the Holy Spirit might touch them as these are the team of Stephen ministers being trained. Um, they are excellent. And um, anyway, I'll go ahead and Mark, go ahead, brother. Heavenly Father, uh, thank you for all the leaders and supervisors of all committees here at HFUMC. But today we're especially thanking and praising up Suzanne and Todd for taking on this serious uh, uh, endeavor. Please pray for their discernment to get it to the right Stephen minister and pray for uh, the, the congregation to entrust us to uh, be a part of their uh, support system. It's in your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. Let's give it a little God appreciation for them. At this time, if the ushers and would come forward, we will take our morning offering. Let us pray. Father in heaven, we thank you for this day. We thank you for the way that you have provided for us this week. And Lord, we just give back a portion of that to you right now. Lord, we just thank you for all the ways that you have provided. It's in your precious and holy son's name I pray. Amen. Just the song 
of every high and every low. Remind me once again just who I am because I need to know. that. Mm. Go ahead, Rebecca. Mm. Mm. Well, I'm not going to start off the sermon this way, but I'm going to tell you this right now. You need to believe who he says you are. God loves you, right? Amen. Amen. Mm. And so um, we've been talking about uh, back to the basics. And so last week, what I talked about, what it means to know God and know Christ, and then to grow in Christ is what we're going to talk about today, serve Christ and share Christ. And um, with that being said, um, I want to open with a scripture in Hebrews, um, Hebrews 10, verse 24. And let us consider each other carefully for the purpose of sparking love and good deeds. 
don't stop meeting together with other believers, which some people have gotten the habit of doing. Instead, encourage one another, especially as you see the day drawing near. This is the word of God for us, people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Whatever you might need from God today, just ask God for it in the midst of this prayer, okay? Whatever you might need. Gracious and loving Lord, we come to you this day, dear Lord. Remember who you say that we are. You say that we are the redeemed. You say that we are the loved. You say that our, your grace overflows upon us, dear Lord. You say that you care about us. You say that nothing will forsake us, dear God. So if anyone here has any doubts about your love, dear Lord, I ask that you just wash it away. Tell Satan to get behind, gracious God, and let your Holy Spirit fall in this place. No matter what we've done or who we've done it to, gracious God, it will not separate us from your love. Dear Lord, I ask that your spirit just pull upon me what you would have me say and help me stand back and get out of the way, gracious God, if I need to. I ask this in your holy name, dear Lord. Amen. When I was a kid, I hope you remember this when you were a kid. I remember it started this way. Everybody gathered together. One person would start one, two, three, four, 15, 19, 30, 40, 50. Here I come. And you would start that great game known as hide and seek. You remember that? Anybody played hide and seek before? I mean, some of you haven't played hide and seek before? My goodness, what a fun game that was. And kids still love to play it. But about 20 years ago, we had a family gathering. I had my aunts and my uncles, and they were all at different ages from 80 to, to three, four years old. And we decided at nighttime to play this game of hide and seek. And it was so much fun. People were running to the base. You'd always have a base, and somebody would hide, and they'd run to the base. And it's so exciting because, you know, there was always that thing that would happen. At the very end, when somebody... Um, couldn't be found and you're ready for the game to start again you would yell all ye all ye income free remember that am I the only one that might date myself here <laughs> all ye all ye income free but there would always be that one person that they would be hiding out really good and we would shout out where are you where are you and they never wanted to give up their hiding space remember now I'll be honest with you I told the earlier service I always got caught because I was a little too chubby to be hidden anywhere you try to hide anybody try to try to hide behind the cross and you we can see you we can see you some of you know what I'm talking about I'm not I'm not gonna say who so where are you and I think as kids I remember my kids used to run around and hide and you could see them right there, but you say, where are you? I can't see you. Anybody ever do that with their kids or grandkids? Where are you? I can't see you. They could just giggle and laugh. Where are you? There's something about being asked, where are you? Knowing that somebody cares about where you are. That somebody wants to know where you've been hiding. That somebody is looking for you. And so today, as we talk about what it means to grow in God, the question I have to ask you is, where are you? Where are you hiding? I think some of us, metaphorically or ironically or however you want to say it, have been hiding away from God. In fact, what's interesting is in Genesis 3, 9, the first question God asked, the first thing, the first question God asked is Adam and Eve were hiding, says, hiding says this, Adam and Eve had messed up a little bit and they were hiding from God. They found out they were naked. And the Lord called to the man and said to him, where are you? Where are you? God calls us because God wants us to know him. God wants us to grow with him. So where are you? What are you hiding from in your life? Where is the places that you're afraid to show yourself because you think that God can't see you? Here's the funny thing. God can see you and God loves you anyway. Does that make sense? Now, I don't know about you, I spent a lot of time in my life sometimes trying to hide from God and hide from people. Am I the only one that's ever done that? And I think that what's bad about things now is that people can go into a room and they can go online, they can hide away from the world. And it seems that COVID didn't help that we could just hide away. But in our understanding of growing with God, what does it mean to grow? It means to answer the question, where are you? You see, the reason why we need to come out of hiding is that we've got to get to know and grow in Christ. So I've asked you to read the book of Matthew. Guess what? If you read it, thank you. So I don't, I'm not going to ask for a sign of hands because I want to invite. But guess what? We can start Mark now. Okay? So that's a shorter chapter. So if you didn't read Matthew last week, let's shoot for Mark. Okay? We got three more chances after this to get the gospel right. All right? So how many of you are going to try to try? Just say you're going to try to read Mark. Raise your hand if you're going to try. Okay. I'm, thank you. Thank you. That's great. 
<laughs> okay, Gail. <laughs> we need to come out of hiding because I think if we come out of hiding, and what I mean by that, if we try to grow in Christ, is that we'll get closer to God. That's the only reason why I want you to grow in Christ, is to get closer to God. Because then you get to know a God that loves you, a God that cares about you, a God that can help you in your stuff. The way God does this is through grace. So many of you may have heard the word prevenient grace before. If you haven't, it's a, it's a Methodist term, United Methodist term. It's, it's what John Wesley talked about, this grace that goes before. It woos you before you even knew it. It's this grace that comes to your life. It's, it might have been the grace that got you to come to church today, really. It's that grace that said, I'm too tired. I don't want to be here. The kids are in trouble, but I'm going to come because I, we're just going to come. It's God's grace wooing you. And then in the midst of our understanding of grace, this thing called justifying grace, which is what Christ did on the cross for us, that Christ came and died on our behalf and it justified us. It made us right with God. That we didn't do it. There's nothing we did that do it. That God did it on our behalf. That justified us. And that moves on to a thing called sanctification. Which actually means we're just trying to get better with God. And so to grow with God and to know God is to be sanctified in God. It means that we don't have it figured out. It doesn't make us holier than holy. It doesn't make us perfect. What it means is we're trying to learn more about God. We're trying to read and grow in our faith. We're trying to be part of groups because we're, what we're trying to do is we're trying to be like a disciple. And so you say, well, Scott, what does that mean to be a disciple? Well, in the Gospels, it talks about disciples of Jesus Christ and they weren't perfect. They were messed up. In fact, they spent all that time, we talked about last week, they spent all that time with Jesus and he still said, who do you say that I am? And the None of them really knew. And then finally, you know, Peter stands up and says, they say you're the Christ. My question for you is, how are you growing in your faith? How are you growing with God? Did you know, I, I did a thing, do you know there's 10,080 minutes in a week? Does anybody know that as other means? But then I get that right, all you mathematicians. 10,080 minutes. And so I normally preach, if you're first timers, I usually preach seven minutes. No, I'm just kidding. But. I usually don't preach more than 20 minutes. You know that. It's 15 to 18, 20 minutes. I feel like at that point you don't want to pay attention. You're thinking about lunch. Really, that's the truth. And I am too. A little of transparency. So we're thinking about this. If you take one hour of church service, that is less than a half a percent, not even one percent, half of a percent of your weekly time. So I want to, I want to say something to you. And I, I, get mad at me if you want, but let me, let me tell you this. If you are coming only on Sunday morning and you really want to grow in your faith with God, you're not going to get that from me in a half a percent of all your weekly time. It's an impossibility. It doesn't matter what I say or how I say it. It's not enough time for you to invest in growing with God. I'm glad that you come. I want you excited to get you fired up so that you can become a disciple and grow deeper in God and read the Bible for yourself. Guess what? Don't let somebody tell you what the Bible says. Read it for yourself so you can make a decision for yourself what God is saying to you. Amen? Amen. We spend so much time worried about what every philosophy person is saying, every theologian is saying, or God forbid what a politician is saying. And I'm telling you, God gave us the Bible so that you can read it for yourself and discern what truth God is saying to you. Now that's the hard part. Because what happens is, it's like, it's like working out. So... If any of you ever started any kind of exercise regimen or started walking, let's say walking. How many of you in this room walk on a regular basis? Nobody else walks regular. My God, boy, we got to get a dietitian in here. No. <laughs> when you start any kind of exercise program or anything, you don't just start running a marathon. You spend time walking. It's hard, man. It's a pain. It really is. In my 40s, I had gotten kind of plump and out of shape and my blood pressure was high. And Beth actually said to me, you're going to up and die on me. And I said, well, no, I'm not. And so in my 50s, I started doing CrossFit. I hate CrossFit. Let's be honest. I do. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I do. But I only do it because it makes me stronger and healthier. So I don't have to take medicine and do other stuff. But it was, it's been a grind. When you grow in your faith with God, you've got to invest something in it. You don't run a marathon overnight. I didn't all of a sudden lift a bunch of weight overnight. It took time. And it took practice. The question is that we've got so many things going on. How are you growing in your relationship with God? To be a disciple. Come to worship. So here's the thing I tell you. If you come to worship, I'm glad that you're here. 
So you say, Scott, for the next eight weeks, I'm going to try to come twice a month. Great. Scott, I might consider a Bible study. Great. Here's what I want to tell you. If you don't have a Bible study, I'm going to start one, okay? In the month of October, if you, we got, I think we got the screen of classes. Do we have the classes up there? I want to, here's all the different classes that we have that are offered right now. These are Sunday school classes. Our Sunday school classes are great, okay? They are. I've been to every one of them and they're excellent. They're groups, they grow together, they get to know God better. They're fantastic. But some of them have been together a long time and you might not want to be part of that group. You might want something new. So I tell you, Beth and I are going to start a group in October. We're going to start a new group. So if you haven't been to a Bible study group, and I don't want you transferring from one group, you know what I'm saying? That would make the teacher mad. But if you don't have a class, I will, I, I'm going to start one so that we can grow together. That we can know God together. And so, but if you don't, I want, one of these groups of these people hopefully will invite you to be part of a small group. Now you say, Scott, Okay, they're excited. They're already signing up. That's what I like right now. Let's give it up for them. All right, there you go. <laughs> Sweetie, it's great. She's telling me to wrap it up, so I'm going to. <laughs> I want you just to consider it. So I'm going to tell you what the impact I think it can make. So when I was out of college at Austin P, and we got done at Austin P, I had a friend named Craig. He had just gotten out of the military. He had served uh, in uh, uh, Desert Storm, and he had gotten out of the military and he stayed in Clarksville and he needed to finish up another year or two of college. Now, Craig was a decorated, he, was a, he, he got decorated and did a fantastic job and saw stuff in Desert Storm. But the story about Craig is this, is that Craig, Craig had a choice to go in the army. He was either going in the army or go to jail. He had gotten in some trouble and got a felony charge and he was told he'd go, he's a smart guy, go in the army, go to jail. And he chose to go in the army. And he started working his life back and he started going to this Sunday school class of ours, to this class, and a friend in the class, she was 40 years old, seemed aged to me at the time. She was 40 years old, she was married, she had kids, and she told to all of us post-college kids, she said, and Craig, she said, I'm gonna offer a class called the Friendship Factor at my house, and I'm gonna have food. Well, we were in, you know, say we were, we were all in. So we'd meet for about an hour, hour and a half, 30 minutes of light Bible study, light talking about things, it wasn't anything too heavy, but out of that, Craig, Lieutenant Colonel Craig, who now is a chaplain for the U.S. military for the last 20 years, who served in all kind of hot spots around the world because he had served previously, he decided to go to seminary. And it all started with that Friendship Factor class of just people loving on him. By the way, before he could become an officer, he had to get a special release of the felony charge. And then the president actually released the felony itself so he doesn't have it anymore. That's what happens. And then me, later on, I can trace back my call to ministry to that moment where that class opened up. A regular class in a small church with eight or ten of us and two people went in the ministry. Now, I'm not saying all of you should be a pastor. In fact, I would say, I, I would say that probably not. You don't need to be a clergy, clergy, full-time clergy person. But I am saying that God is calling you to know him and then to respond to him. Here, let me tell you a secret. You all are smarter than me. There are people in this room smarter than me, better prayers than I am. Some of you are deep theologians. Some of you know how to care for people better than I do, the Stephen ministers. What I'm saying is, is that God has gifted you with so many gifts. We just have to respond in kind to what God is doing. So I'm just asking you to take a chance. Here's what I want you to just think about. Just think about considering. Well, I'd like you to think about considering reading Mark. And then I'd like you to consider at some time in the fall, maybe coming to, possibly taking, going to visit a class. That's all. Pray to God will help you. God, and you say, you know what? I, I just want to give a try that maybe God is talking to me. Maybe God is doing something in my life. Maybe God is going to use me to grow deeper. I'm telling you. I'm warning you too. If you do that, God's going to shake your life up. It's going to be exciting and fun and dangerous. Dangerous and scary and heartfelt and exciting and fun and heartfelt and all of that. And your life is going to get so much easier. No, your life ain't going to get easier. It's not going to get easier because life is life, right? 
You just know that when you're walking through it as you grow in God, that God walks beside you. It doesn't mean the hurt is any, any less. It just means that you know people are walking with you. That's the difference. Where are you? Where are you? All ye, all ye, income free. Come home and grow with me. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and all God's people say, Amen. Amen. Let us stand and respond together. Christ is my firm foundation, the rock on which I stand when everything around me is shaking. I've never been more glad that I put my faith in Jesus, cause he's never let me down. He's faithful through generations So why would he fail now? He won't He won't
as, as you go from this place today, I just want to, um, let's not put these seats up. Let's leave, let, let's, let's put these seats up. Let's leave these seats where they are for the ice cream social. They, that's what I was told to do. It's at three o'clock. Also, um, what I wanted to do is I'm going to say something that I want you guys to sing that chorus, uh, however you want to do that last part. He won't, he won't, he won't before they go into the last song, okay? Right. Know this. If you don't hear anything else, if you don't hear one other thing I've said to you or one other thing that was sung to you, hear this. God loves you. Christ was born because he loved you. Mm. <laughs> Christ died because he loves you, right? And I'm betting my life on it. And I please bet your life on it that Christ is going to come again because why? Because he loves you. Let's sing this to that point he won't. That's what I, that part right there. However you want to do it, Travis, and go we'll in. Back it up a little bit because because we, we've all been through it. He's delivered us. Rain came when my house was built on. We'll see you at 3 o'clock for some ice cream. God bless you.